working on a 2014 Mitsubishi Outlander with a 3.0 liter V6, which that motor's in a few different vehicles. So an Eclipse, uh, Montero Sport, maybe I don't know for sure. Either way, uh, what we're doing today is adjusting valve clearances, and I just want to do a step-by-step -step on how you make that happen. So we're just going to go by the book and do it that way. So first step, well, first step is to get to this part, but you'll figure that out. Uh, but once you get to this point, you want to put the engine in top dead center number one cylinder. So it's just going to tell you to take the notch on the crankshaft and line it up with the timing marks over here. So let's look at that. So down there, there's a little highlight you can see to the right of the of the uh, belt, the serpentine belt. Just to the right of where the magnet is there, there's a little notch. That's the notch in the crank shaft uh, pulley. And then just to the right of that, there's a little bump out with a timing cover. And it's got a T for uh, top dead center right there. So that's your starting place. And it's a 22 millimeter on the crank pulley. So assuming your car hasn't had any uh, jump timing or anything like that, everything's in time, then this will work. But if you have to redo your timing job, do that first before you do this. So uh, here's the picture. Right bank. Right bank is back there against the firewall. And left bank is up here by the radiator side. So right bank, left bank, cylinders 1, 3, and 5, and 2, 4, 6. And there's a certain sequence that you have to do this in. Take that off. All right, so I'm going to read through this, but then we're going to actually talk about what it actually is. So, uh, valve clearance inspection adjustment can be performed on rocker arms indicated by a white arrow when number one cylinder piston is the top dead center on the compression stroke. So, what they're saying is number one cylinder, top dead center, compression stroke is when um, you can check the valve clearances on cylinders one five and six highlighted in the white arrows and then it further su suggests um, uh, the rocker arms indicated by the black arrows when number four cylinder piston is the top dead center on compression stroke so that would be number four cylinder on compression stroke we'll show in a minute further note if the rocker arm of number six cylinder at the intake side is moved up and down and the rocker arm is moved Number one cylinder is the top dead center compression stroke. So what they're saying is, if you've got this, uh, which you assume to be lined up on the timing mark, and the piston's at the top, top dead center, which I'll show you, it's at the top, then cylinder six, right here, there will be some movement. It's very slight, right? whatever lash adjustment is here makes a wiggle noise versus absolutely zero movement. So if number six had zero movement, then you know you're on the wrong stroke. But this one's got movement, so we're top dead center number one cylinder, and this is one verifying it. Measure the valve clearance for intake side. All right, so here's the intake side, right? So this is the intake, 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 and the exhaust is on the outside. The outside, the exhaust side, um, it just has the uh, hydraulic valve lifters in it, so we don't set those. If the valve clearance is not specified, loosen the rocker arm and lock nut, adjust the clearance, Using a thickness gauge while turning the adjusting screw, standard value cold engine, 0 0.10 millimeter or 0 0.004 inches. So I've got uh, two different feeler gauges. I had to get another one because I didn't have one that went down to 0 0.004, but I got these that's 0 0.006 and 0 0.008. Um, and you've, you know, you've got to bend them to get them in their slots down there. And then the other tool, you need some sort of an offset wrench that's a 10 mil. They do make a specialty tool that is meant for these types of engines. It's kind of a two-in-one design with this and a screwdriver built in. I don't have that, but this is what I do have. 
I had gone through and already did a preliminary uh, inspection of all of these so I knew what was going on with it. I just found it was easier to separate out your tests by uh, cylinder one top to the center and cylinder four and then going over and using you know checking them as the picture showed as far as the uh, white versus black arrows. So let me show you what it looks like. I have I found 0 0.006 and 007 on cylinder one top dead center so that's where we're at right now. So if we come over here and look at cylinder one uh, intake it's these two right here. So there's the lock nut and then there's the tightening and loosening screw. So I'm going to get this set up and show you. So we take, uh, and there's not always a lot of room. I mean, th if this was a little bit deeper, it'd be a little better. Um, so find a place that you can get a grip on it so we can loosen it. Put your screwdriver in the middle. Now I'll tell you also, be mindful. This is very thin metal up here and it's easy to uh, break those little pieces off. So don't do that. All right, so we're gonna hold our screwdriver in the middle, hold it firm, and we're just gonna loosen the wrench up a little bit until it breaks free. Now, just prior to this, I should have showed you ahead of time, um, take your feeler gauge and just put it down in there. You'll eventually feel where the crack is, and you'll slide various sizes in there to see what fits and what doesn't. So right now the 06 fits in there, but we want the four. So we're gonna take our four, slide it in there. And we're gonna take our screwdriver and just tighten it a little bit until you start to feel it catch, back off a little bit and feel the drag. You want a little bit of drag on it. You don't want it to just hold it tight a little bit of drag on it and that's where you want to keep it at then you put your wrench back on it this so is we're going to hold the screw in place and you're going to tighten the wrench the nut down around make sure that still moves a little bit and that's it go on and on and on around with the rest of them so this one's 004 now, this one's currently 007, so we're going to adjust it, again, same procedure. Now, there's going to be maybe a little harder to get to, I'll come to this side of it. And hold the screwdriver in place, hold it tight, and then loosen the wrench. A little bit. Grab your zero zero four. All right, so we're sliding it. We're just kind of tighten the screw down a little bit to get a little bit of drag. And if it sticks, back off a little bit. A little bit of drag, and that's our sweet spot. Back to our ten mil. Hold our bit. And it's just only 80 inch 80 inch pounds plus or minus. So it's not a lot. And then we're back to 0 0.004. Okay, so you while you're at cylinder one top dead center, you do cylinders one, five, and six. All at the same time. Don't touch anything. Just do that same procedure for one, five, and six. Then we'll do the next step. All right, so just visually so you can see, here's cylinder four, it's a top dead center, cylinder one top dead center. So they're following the same, the same stroke. So what we're gonna do now is turn the crank and let this go up and down and we're gonna look for cylinder four, coming back up and find out where it falls in relation to uh, top dead center compression stroke. Now, 
I'll tell you, be careful with this because uh, the way the engine's tilted and the piston, the top of the head's waffled a little bit, this will get stuck between uh, the spark plug hole and the piston. So you got to be careful letting it free ride. So. Feeling for it to stop. Okay, so that's at the top. And then it says if the rocker arm of number six cylinder at the intake side is moved up and down and the rocker arm is not moved, number four cylinder is at top dead center. So those are not moving like they did on number one. So we know when they're correct position, because those are stiff. So the next rotation in this, now that we're in to cylinder four, top dead center, is we can measure cylinders two, three, and four. Now, my prior measurements showed that cylinders two, three, and four, uh, this is where we landed at. So we gotta adjust these. But just remember which cylinder you're working on that makes you write down the right spot. So for the ease of visibility, I'm going to use the number three cylinder so you guys can see. All right, so this is my .008 feeler gauge, and this one's my .006. So I had two different measurements for both different valves. You can just got to wiggle it till you find the spot. It slides in there, and we need those to be .004. So I'm going to hold back against uh, the turning screw and just loosen up that top nut a little bit. You can back it off because you're going to have to screw it down. Get my .004 in here. Just find the drag. There we go. And hold against it so it doesn't turn. Tighten down the nut. And then rinse and repeat. Also, as a follow up, when you go to like cylinder one or cylinder four, top dead center, when you're doing this, always make sure you go back down and check your timing mark to make sure that your timing mark is lined up with the T. So just because you stop here because it stops going up uh, when you're checking for, for cylinder four, just make sure you finalize it over here that it's up all the way and not just what you think by it. And that's pretty much it. Put everything back together when you're done. Uh, any good comments, leave them down below to help the community out. Otherwise, I hope it helped you guys out. You can definitely do this from home. It's not a big deal. You just got to have the right tools uh, and information. So thanks so much. Have a good day.